Hi, welcome to Old Sneelox Workshop. Today we're going to talk about sharpening something kind of different. It's called an adjustable bit or expansive bit. The expansive bit has a cutter that can be moved back and forth and change the diameter of the hole that it cuts. It usually comes with two different size cutters so that you can go very small and fairly large. First I'm going to show you how to sharpen the cutter and then I'm going to show you how to sharpen the drill itself. Two different parts, but both have a part to play in the process. My able assistant pointed out that I hadn't explained very clearly how I made the radius on the stone. To make the radius on the stone match that of the cutter, I used a grinder. I rounded the edges of the stone and then ran it across the cutter. Notice the high spots on the stone, round those away, and went again. When I got really close, then I stopped and I ran it across the cutter one last time, just to be sure. Then I started sharpening the cutter. Put the water on the stone, run the cutter over the, the stone. As the stone sharpens the cutter, the cutter cuts the stone to the shape. adjustable augers have a timing. The last thread of the pilot screw needs to lead directly into the cutting edge so that when the thread reaches it, it's a smooth transition. This cutter has been sharpened many, many times. To touch up the edge of the cutter, we're going to use our favorite safe file and carefully just smooth the edge enough to get a nice sharp line on it. We don't want to take away a lot of steel. There's not a lot there to work with. Nice and sharp. No little shiny line along the edge of the cutter to give us the indication that it's dull. I think we're done with that. When we slide the cutter in, we want to make sure there's no gap between this surface and that surface. If those two surfaces don't make completely, there'll be a gap there. The chips will come up off the edge of the blade, jam in underneath the cutter, and plug the blade. So we're going to make sure that that's up snug. We can see there's no daylight there. If there was, we would once again take our safe file and file this surface here, right there along that edge, so that this cutter we take away a little bit of the dovetail. When we take away a little bit of the dovetail, that moves the cutter in the body of the drill up against this surface and takes away that gap. If we filed on this, the other cutter that comes with the drill might not need that. 
so we'd end up having to do both cutters exactly the same. Now say you've got a really old drill bit and somebody's worked on this thing and butchered it up pretty good. And you have to take quite a bit off of this in order to get it to go. Because somebody's taken a file to this top edge here. The worst thing you can do to one of these cutters is file that edge there. Because remember we don't want to have that gap. We don't want to have a gap there. So if we file that surface, we're creating a gap. And we file down the dovetail, we get rid of the gap. But then when you tighten the bolt down, there's not enough movement in the clamp to make up the loss. There's something you can try. You take the bolt out, Set the drill on a solid surface, an anvil works quite well, and tap that. Not hard, and only along this edge. What that's going to do is it's going to move that steel on that edge just a little bit that direction. And it'll cause the clamp to tighten up just a bit. You don't want to go too much because remember we've still got two cutters. This one very seldom wears out because most people don't use it. With that done, the gap is gone. The cutter seats tightly. Now all we have to do is set it and cut our hole. There's a line on the body of the drill and a scale on the face of the cutter. If we line that edge up, we're going to cut a one inch diameter hole. If we line this edge up, it's going to cut an inch and a half diameter hole. That's the range that this drill bit is made to do. You can go a little bigger, but you want to remember not to go too far because you'll overload the drill bit. Also, much more than this, you'll start losing grip with your clamp. So we're going to set this for an inch and a half hole. This particular drill has a hex head and a screw head. I'm going to use the hex head and snug that up. Doesn't need to be mongo tight. Just snug. Good and solid. Because I'm boring an inch and a half hole, I'm going to use the largest brace that I own because I need the leverage. the other side we're going to flip it over and then use the threaded hole as a pilot so we line back up again and bore through from this side so we don't break out There we go. Inch and a half hole, single bit cutter. 
just has to be sharp. Sharpen and adjust an adjustable drill bit. You can grab that old one out of the drawer, sharpen it up, and find yourself a whole new range of bits that you never knew you had. Good luck. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you like the video, click like for us, would you? Thanks again.